Hey guys, going to be taking a look at the Racer Star Star F3S on one board. First, I'll have an overview of the board, what's going on with it, and how it looks and everything. I'll weigh it. I'll use my multimeter, stick it on there, and see uh, what's connected to what. Then I'll plug it into Betaflight, uh, see what version it comes with. Then I'll plug it into BL Heli, see what version the ESCs come with. And I'll stick it in a build, go fly, have some DVR footage just to see how it performs, if whether it blows up or not, we'll see. So just to start, you can see it comes with XT60, nylon mounting hardware, some shrink wrap I took off. Get a closer look at the board. You can see it's shiny. They applied some conformal coating for water resistance at the factory, that's cool. As far as all-in-one, they mean it has Betaflight OSD, 5 volt regulators, F3 processor, current sensor, and 4-in-1 30 amp ESCs. What it does not have is any way to do black box. I'm not worried about that. I'm going to be soft mounting it and uh, I'll just tune it by eye like I always do. I'm not a fan of black box really. Except for gyros and whatever but soft mounting usually clears that up. Just to see what you used to need, this glob weighs three times as much. Look at all this crap. You don't need this anymore. One PDB sized board. You can see the XT60 isn't actually sticking off super far like some of the other ones they have. So shouldn't shouldn't be too at risk. It's pretty thick actually. So I'll just stick it on my scale. Coming in at 16.7 grams, that's pretty great. Use my multimeter. It says that the power connectors, the power is connected to the mounting holes. That's true. So just don't use steel hardware to your frame because you're going to have a bad time. Ground is to the connector, of course. Uh, these, I already know, are running in series together, so they're combining their output. You're normally uh, 500 milliamps, so together an amp, I wouldn't push them with a VTX that sucks up a ton of juice. I'm going to be using a VTX03, tiny, lightweight, should be fine. You can see, yeah, there we go. Just refer to the you know, Banggood's uh, diagram online for how to wire your stuff up. I'm going to be using, well, maybe not. I think I'm going to use uh, XM Plus, so I won't need smart port. Anyways, no surprises or anything with how it looks. I'll plug it into Betaflight. We'll see how that goes. So we are connected to beta, uh, Betaflight now. If I go to the CLI, type in version. It's running Omnibus 3.1.6. I'll probably update it. Now I'll plug it into BL Heli and we'll see what the ESCs are doing. All right, here we are, connected to BL Heli. Comes with GH30 16.5. I'll update that as well. Otherwise, all four show up. That looks good. All right. So now I'll skip ahead to putting it into this QAVR knockoff frame. Soft mounted. And I'll have some Emacs RS2205S motors, and we'll see how that goes.
All right, so just to follow up after the flight and tips and everything, uh, nothing bad happened. It was a uh, perfect flight for a maiden. Everything uh, went well. You see, I actually used an XSR, and that does hook up to the TX1, which is UART1, for SmartPort. Uh, I don't know if you noticed in the video, but there was some horizontal lines. I think that's interference, probably because I'm just running everything off these two 5-volt regulators, and that's running everything else. So maybe I'll change that in the future, or not. It wasn't that bad. Um, the other thing, I, I direct soldered this XT60 onto there just to test it. I was in a hurry. But I would generally not recommend doing that because you'll snap in a, in a crash or anything. This All the force will get transferred to this thin PCB, and those will snap that right off, and you'll have a bad time there. <laughs> so I'd use something like this instead just a uh, short little wires to pigtail it off so that the wires take the force instead of the PCB that's a way better idea uh, I might also add a thousand uh, uh, microfarad uh, low ESR capacitor I think onto the power lead some somehow maybe that'll get rid of the interference I'm not sure it's worth a try though um, another thing I've noticed is since or maybe just for me, for this, since I'm running everything off the 5 volt regulators, it gets hot real fast. So I wouldn't leave this sitting for a while because it gets... I'll, I'll show you real quick. Plug this sucker in. Use my temp gun. And right off the bat, it's cooking at... Actual regulators themselves are like at a holy 140 right now. Processors are like 90. BTX, like 110 or so. So you see, it gets up to temp real quick just because I'm using those VT, uh, those um, linear BCs. So maybe if I didn't use them, it wouldn't be that hot. So that's not really a good thing. Anywho, I'll plug it into Betaflight now, and there's some other things that I configured that uh, you should see. Alright, so I'm in Betaflight on the configuration page. Scroll down to the current. You actually need to tune the current sensor to your specific board. I wound up at 318 for the scale, and that's pretty accurate from uh, the couple of packs I ran through and then recharged to determining how much I took out versus how much I put back in. So 318, though it comes stock at 400, and that's, I mean, you, it, it under predicts how much it's drawing at that point for mine, and that was not good news if you keep going like that. So 318. So there you go, a quick run through of the Star F3S all in one board. Performed perfectly well, nothing exploded. I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, thanks for watching.